Okay, after I found my misplaced order of uh, Dykem Steel Blue, that I swore I never got, but evidently I did. Uh, memory stuff, so. I'm just going to put these on the cylinder heads. Now, this stuff is strong. It'll, it'll definitely knock you out. Okay, I'm not used to this type here. I usually buy stuff with the brush, but this will work. This is what I got. I'm just going to put some bluing on the head here. Okay, I don't think I'll be buying this again. At least not this roller tip thing. I like to be able to paint it on there, but this is what I got, so we're just going to put some bluing on there, it's strong now, give it a sec, couple of seconds to dry, and all we're doing here is I'm checking the edge of the cylinder head where the gasket goes to make sure that I don't actually cut into the head, past the head gasket fire ring. When I'm working on this head, it should be dry enough. I'm just going to stick the cylinder on there. And then I'm just going to take my pick and scrub the line around the outside of it. And evidently, it can't do anything much with that. The cylinder, edge of the cylinder is right up against about where this little line is right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's right on the edge. See that little shiny line there? That's right on the edge of the cylinder. Let me point it out for you if I can. So basically, right here, right at the edge. So that's about how much room I got. So I don't, don't really want to go beyond that very much at all. Which I don't need to. I just need to be careful when I'm cutting these angles right here. Because they're pretty abrupt right there where they come out of the seat. And I'll be grinding those down. Make them a little bit easier with the with the mill there, or with the die grinder. Uh, now, when I'm doing this, I'll use old valves, but I'm not. Use, I'm going to use these valves because they're they're still good. They're in great condition. But I got valves out of the other head that are trashed. I mean, they they are trashed. The faces are gone on them. I'm sure they could probably be ground, but they're pretty much useless to me because I don't have a valve refacer. So we'll do those, and I'll, I'll do the video on when I start these heads, start doing them here in the future, probably next week sometime. Should be. Kind of want to get the pistons and cylinders on there. So I can check the deck heights on them. And I'll put the cam cover on there. Coming this coming week, it's it's painted and dried and ready. I need to give it a good bath. Make sure I don't have any uh, swarf uh, cuttings, sand, dirt, grit, anything inside any of the oil passages or inside the bushings in the cam cover so I can put it together. But that's it, this is just a little short video. I'm getting ready to start doing these here shortly. Like I said, within probably probably next week sometime, I'll start, uh, start doing the chambers to blend these, blend these in. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's like a, see it right there? There's like an edge right there. 
we need to blend that in so it's not impeding the flow on the head there and I'll just use a little little ball little ball die grinder to cut this down pretty much even blend it in really and right here there's a big big ridge There's a big ridge right here in the center where the exhaust goes in there. It's like right there. Anyway, regardless of that, we'll blend those in on the intake and exhaust side and uh, fix these ports up. Down inside here, they're a little a little rough there they need some reshaping and cut the guides down slightly my limit on the guides is I think I measured them like I said you want to run five to seven times the diameter of the valve as a safety margin for the valve guide length which was short side on these or actually that that is five to seven times 312 gives them a length of uh, basically 2.2 something so these are 2.4 something meaning I could take 200 thousandths off these guides to help them flow a little better and uh, fix these ports up down inside of here especially around the valve guide boss I'll get into that when I when I'm getting started doing them I'm not doing them today I'm just goofing off really need to fix this area down in here around here where that guide boss is and pretty much widen the widen the port on this side and this side and then fix this, fix that little bit of a lip right there. There's a, it's worse on the short side of the port. But we'll fix those up in the exhaust too. Now on these, I can't really thin the, can't really thin the seats up too much. Slightly. I'll get into that when I do them because I need to measure these. I need to measure the width of these and I'm doing this by hand so I need to continually measure them when I'm grinding on these to kind of blend the seats in better because you want them equal all the way around but that's in the future here I haven't started on them yet I will here shortly And I'll do the same thing with the exhaust here. I need to trim around this guide boss right in here and here and cut this guide down. I figured I could go about 200,000 so I'm shortening the guide on this side. Got plenty of plenty of guide length on the other side to do them. I've already checked the top collar to seal distance on the guide and got plenty of clearance there with these stock retainers so I know that's good so all I'm doing is taking them off the bottom and I'll blend these seats in there see how wide that 60 degree is there it's pretty damn wide I'll end up blending these pretty good it's got like a it's got like a sharp edge right right there where they ground the 60 in here I'll fix that when I get to that point. But uh, really, that's it for this. And I really didn't show you anything other than some cylinder heads with some dicom on them. But uh, it's raining. It's been raining most of the day here. Well, it wasn't this morning. We went to uh, 
drag strip down Rockingham without me checking whether they closed the event or not because it was they were just calling for scattered thunderstorms. Which around here, scattered thunderstorms meaning it might be raining five miles away and it's dry and the sun shining everywhere else. So we drove down there <clears throat> and they, uh, it rained spotty here and there along the way. Some places pretty heavy and then you drive for five minutes and the sun would be shining. They'd be clear again. We got down to the track down there, and had never been to Rockingham before. <clears throat> and got there, and there was there was no there were some campers out there, but nobody was there, pretty much. So we went out there, walked along the track because the gate was open, gates were open, nobody was there that we saw anyway inside the track inside the facility. So walked around and. Let my son check it out. He'd never been to a drag strip before, which was my fault for not taking him there. Then do a couple of, I think we went to, uh, we went to VIR a couple of times up there, the road course in Virginia, a couple of times, which is nice because I had started off in drag racing. Well, I wasn't drag racing. I was tuning for somebody. And then I got kind of bored with that, so I went to made the mistake of going to a road race in some point, and I was like, shit, I can do that. Famous last words, huh? So I had to go road racing, which I did, and loved it, and did that for, man, I don't know, five, six years, something like that. probably five years. I think first year I did as a novice. Uh, first year I did as a novice and made expert in one year. And then went on from there, did a 883 series and then the Buell series. And, uh, you know, I'd do some, uh, what they call it, uh, Formula 2 Twins, Formula 1 Twins, and Arma Vintage, which they had Twins Racing, which would be the equivalent of like Bears in Europe or New Zealand or Australia. I had fun doing it. Learned a lot. You learn a lot racing these old air-cooled things. You learn a lot racing anything, really. You kind of have to. And then got out of it for a long time. You know, I got to the point where I kept telling myself, man, if this isn't fun anymore, I'm not doing it. And then it got to the point where it wasn't really fun anymore. So, quit doing that. And just went back to work and didn't really get involved in it, but very, very sporadically. Here and there. I think I tuned a bike for a guy doing dirt drags one time down here in North Carolina because I moved from Maryland to North Carolina. And did uh did a couple of did a sportster drag bike, not really a drag bike, drag bike, more like a guy just wanted to go racing a little bit, so I basically had a sportster and did a top end on it and cams and all that kind of crap and tuned it a little bit and he went racing locally and never really got any feedback from him except for he thought it would run faster than it did which after looking you know I didn't know I knew nothing about eighth mile track because everything I'd ever been in was quarter mile but after looking, I was like, man, he's like, that should have been running six something. And asked him, I was like, did you tune anything on it? Did you change the gearing? What's your gearing like? What's your, what, what are you running down the track? And, and 
what what gear what's your top gear when you get down to the end of the eighth mile he didn't even know so i think he was running 725s or something like that which evidently that's not bad for just slapping something together and going after it i don't i don't know what kind of tire he was running i know he had a bar on the bike he's drawing a wheelie bar pangle wheelie bar but i have no idea about if he knew how much air to put in the tire nothing like that so anyway that's enough of me ranting it's just running my mouth here so anyway new subscribers thank you old subscribers thank you uh appreciate you you know if you like my content please like share subscribe all that stuff and uh everybody have a great weekend what's left of it i think it's supposed to rain tomorrow too so we'll see what i can get done tomorrow might be able to get that swing arm back on the bike I've already cleaned the bearings just got to repack them and swing arm should be plenty dry i haven't heat I haven't heated it yet but should be good should be dry enough it dried for a day and a half now pretty much for over a day so that clear should be plenty dry anyway take care have a great weekend thank you